I want you to give a listen to how many of you are excited on the fact that we have Jesus leading us all the way from yeah, earth to heaven. Amen. Listen to this song Mark wrote, My Lord will lead you.
a group called the Statesmen. I remember them, J.D. and the Stamps. Uh, back in them days, the Blackwood Brothers, the Statesmen, and the Stamps, J.D. and the Stamps, toured together for a while, and they called it, they called it the Legends yeah, Tour. Right up here in Auburn, one man. In where? Up here in Auburn. Auburn, okay. Wherever that is, I have no clue, but I'm sure y'all know. North of Fort Wayne. Or, or what? North of Fort Wayne. North of Fort Wayne? Fort Wayne. Oh, Fort Wayne. <laughs> I think I'm 90 years old. I couldn't hear Fort Wayne or Fort Wayne. I didn't know. I'd never heard of Fort Wayne, Indiana. But, uh, I hadn't either. <laughs> <laughs> well, during that tour, the music back in that time was a whole lot different. The style was different. And I've always believed this. It's not the style of music that we should be about. It's the substance of music. Yeah. And uh, so I thought it'd be kind of fun to take that old style and write new lyrics and do it in that old style of music. And this is kind of a tribute to Ken. I wrote this song especially with him in mind during that time. Jesus, oh blessed Jesus. Another four-part harmony. Say that, but I remember 
remember a Saturday evening at the house uh, watching TV with my parents, and Ken came on the television with his two daughters to sing. And I thought, I'd, I'd heard him and seen him sing with the Blackwood Brothers, and I knew he could vibrate the floor. That was in 82. Okay. Uh, I knew he could just vibrate the floor singing bass, but here he was singing a high part with his daughters, and I thought, you know, that's, that's so unusual. He's not just a great bass singer, he's a great singer. And there's a difference, you know. And so I told Ken up in Pennsylvania, I said, Ken, as far as I'm concerned, you're the greatest saint bass singer I've ever heard. Uh, but I knew Ken has known every bass singer since the beginning of time. And because he's known them all, I was curious to know who he thought was the greatest bass singer. So I said to him, I said, Ken, who do you think the greatest bass singer is of all time? And he said, me. <laughs> J.D. Sumner. I remember when I was just a kid. I would try to. I was trying to learn how to sing bass, and uh, and he was my favorite. There was no way to get single low notes like J.D. could back in those days. And uh, I told the guys, I said, we got to do it, an old J.D. Sumner song on their first CD. And I, I told J.D. we played golf probably a hundred times together, and uh, big chief all of us. And I told J.D., I said, as long as you live, I'll never be the ugliest bass singer. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's gone. <laughs> so what does that talk, don't you? <laughs> this is an old J.D. Sumner song, and we do it the same key that he did it in. Oh, man.
more song with you before we take a break, and then we're gonna come back and sing about 10:30. And <laughs> <laughs> no, we ain't gonna do that one. Uh, but uh, we, we're gonna sing one more and take a break. This is a song that's really special to my heart. I wrote this song back some time ago. We was in Kentucky, and we had been in, in been out for several days, and. Uh, um, Ed over here that we didn't introduce. This is Ed Sprinkle. Ed, will you stand up? This is Ed Sprinkle. Y'all make Ed well. Ed is our transportation engineer. Bus driver. Uh, we had been out for several days and we was in Kentucky and Ed had slipped in one afternoon and he was about three pews back stretched out in the pew taking a nap. Uh, because we was going to drive all night that night. And so he was trying to catch up on some sleep. And I was in the bus praying and talking to the Lord. And, and um, I went in and started banging on the piano and writing a song. Well, there a man and Ed raised up his head and he, he said, I'll tell you one thing right now, that better be a good song. I woke him up from his nap. <clears throat> if, if, uh, if you turn on the news nowadays, all just about every newscast that you hear in any news broadcast at some point is going to mention uh, the nation of Islam or that religion, Islam. It's always talked about. And can I tell you something? There's a point of agreement that we have with those in that faith. And I want to tell you what that point of agreement is. Muhammad is dead. <laughs> Can I tell you, Buddha, he's dead too. Yeah. Yeah. Confucius, been dead a long time. Any other faith, when they, any other faith, doesn't matter what it is, when they talk to their God, they're talking to bones in a graveyard. Except for you and I. Amen. When we mention the name of Jesus, yeah. we can take comfort in the fact that He is alive. Yeah. He is the Lord. Amen. We go from church to church to church and sing to people everywhere, and occasionally we hit a group like y'all. But there's a, there's a lot of times where when we go sing, we're looking out of a, at, out at a bunch of people who seemingly are as dead as they can be. Yeah. They're like just walking shells, you know. There's no, there's no uh, emotion or passion in their heart at all for the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I'm saved. Me too. Yeah. I'm glad. And I'm glad that when I talk to my God, He hears me and He answers my prayer. And it just, uh, I was getting weary about that very thing. And I want, I want people to know that we have a God that's worthy of our praise and that should be praised. And we should rejoice. If anybody has a reason to rejoice, it's you and I. And so I wrote this song. It's called Hallelujah. He is risen. Right out of the Bible. I want you to listen to the message.
play you a song when you, while you get ready for the offering. I just want to thank you for letting us come back home. This is a homecoming for us. We love to come to this church. Love having you here, brother. Uh, can I tell you, we've never been here before. I haven't felt the presence of God. And that's, uh, that is a testimony to the, to the power of God's Holy Spirit and the people that congregate who love Jesus. And the Amen. Bible says we're two or three are gathered together in His name. He's in the midst yeah, yeah. of us. Amen. And so I'm thankful that Jesus is here. He's here. And thank you so much for letting us come. And thank you ahead of time for the gift of love you're about to receive. It's hard for four men to live on the road. It's hard. And it gets harder and harder. And I don't have to tell you that. The economy is of such that it affects all of us. But every time I go home and I go to pay my power bill, and I tell them I'm a gospel singer, they say, we don't care. We want our money anyway. Yeah. That's right. And a lot of people say that, uh, you know, boy, I tell you what, a lot of diesel goes in that bus. Can I tell you, the diesel in the bus, it costs a lot. It does. It costs, uh, I think we've spent already, we've spent about $800 to get up here so far in diesel. But can I tell you this? It's not so much the diesel that's the problem, but we're all married. We have wives, and that's an expensive thing. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Yeah. Uh, they, yeah, they like shoes and pocketbooks and dresses and things. But more than that, they they kind of get excited if when we go home, if we can bring a can of Viennese and a pack of crackers to them, if we can afford them. Amen. That so thank you for ahead of time for your gift of love. And I know this. I know that if you're obedient to the voice of the Holy Spirit about your giving, that the need will be met. And so I thank you ahead of time for that. And you can make it out to Valor 3, uh, V-A-L-O-R, uh, uh, Roman numeral 3. 1, 2, 3. I, 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 yeah. Valor.